In this maps video, I'm going to show you how to insert images into Premiere Pro CS6 so that you can create a slideshow of pictures and export it as a movie file. So firstly, we'll open up Premiere Pro CS6, it's this purple icon here. Double click and that may take a little moment to load before we're greeted with this screen here. So on this window, we're going to select new project and here we are going to select where we're saving our project to, which is really important, and also give our project a name. So we're going to make sure that we're saving to a secure location, such as an external hard drive. So to do so, we'll click Browse, and we'll navigate to, you can see here I'm saving to a removable disk, and I'm saving it inside a folder called Slideshow. So I select that folder, and then I'm also going to give my project a name. I'm going to call it Slideshow Maps 1 and I'm going to press OK. Now I'll need to select the preset for my sequence within Premiere Pro. This is also important. We're going to select HDV and within that subfolder we're going to select the option HDV 1080p 25 and then we'll press OK. Now your Premiere Pro workspace should open up. We'll have a quick tour of what's within this workspace if you're not familiar with it, just so you know where everything is and what it does. Firstly, what we are going to do though is the uh, default workspace for CS6 in the SJC Ideas space opens up with our project bin down in the bottom left hand corner. And we're just gonna quickly move that before we start working as it'll be a little bit easier to work with. So how we do that is we just click on the project bin which is in the bottom left hand corner so that the yellow uh, outline appears around it and we'll just click and drag that until the top right hand corner of our screen is highlighted in purple and that is just going to let us now drop that portion of the interface there. So now we've got our project import bin up in the top left hand corner. I'll walk you through what each little section of the interface is actually for. So our import bins where we import anything we're using in our project into. So we will today we'll be importing our photos and also our audio into the import bin. Next to our import bin, we have our source monitor. And our source monitor is where we can preview um, photos before we drop them on the timeline. And we use this a lot when we're working with video. Also next to the source monitor is the effect controls tab and this is where we can change the scaling and positioning of our images a little later on which I will be showing you. In our program monitor we'll be able to play out what's on our timeline and the video that plays out in our program monitor is a reflection of what our finished product will be. It's a reflection of what we have sitting on the timeline. Down in the bottom right hand corner we've got our audio levels. And then to the left of that, we have our timeline, and that's where we'll be dropping our images and also our audio onto the timeline. Next to that, we've also got some tools. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our media browser, which is how we'll be importing our files. And another important thing within there is our effects tab, and that's how we'll apply some effects to our images a little later in the tutorial. Okay, so before we get started, we're just gonna change a few settings. So if you go up to edit in the toolbar, right down to Preferences and then select General. This window will appear and there are two things that we want to focus on. We want to change the still image default duration and this is how long each image will last for in the video, how many seconds it will appear for. So to the right here, it's talking in frames, not seconds. So in Australia, there are 25 frames per second. So four seconds, is four times 25, 100 frames. So how long you want your images to appear for is totally up to you, but for the purpose of this video, we want each picture to last for two seconds. So that will be 50 frames. Next, you wanna make sure you select the default scale to frame size. This is so when we import our images, Premiere Pro automatically scales them to fit within the frame. So when you've done that, we'll click OK. And now we're going to import our images. So how we're going to do that is we're going to use the media browser, which I briefly spoke about before, to navigate to our images and bring them into Premiere Pro. The media browser is a new feature within CS6 and it's a good way to import your files into the import bin. So I know they're saved on my external drive, so I'll drop out my removable drive, slideshow images, 
and then they will appear here and I can drag those up into my import bin. So I'll select them all. So I'll select them all and when I've got them all selected, I'll just click and drag them up into my import bin. And you'll see I've now got all my photos sitting within my import bin. Now I can bring them down onto the timeline one by one, but while I've got them all selected like this, I can bring them all down at once. So again, I'll just click and drag and bring all my images down onto the timeline. Before we continue working, I'll just change one other quick setting of how we view our files within the import bin. At the moment, you can see them sitting as quite large icons, but it's a little easier if you work with them as a list, as you can see more things. And you can also set th that list to have a small uh, thumbnail image next to it so you can see what each file is. So we'll drop down this little icon here. It's a little menu with an arrow next to it. And we'll select list instead of icon. And then we'll also go back into that menu and select thumbnails. So you see now we have a list with a thumbnail sitting beside it. You can see how that's a little easier to work with. A couple of quick things just to work around your space. If you'd like to zoom in and out on your timeline, there are a few ways you can do so. You need to select your timeline and you can hold down Alt on your keypad and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Or alternatively, you can use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. Okay, so now we have all our images lined out on the timeline. We can use what's called our CTI, which stands for Current Time Indicator, to scroll through our images. The Current Time Indicator is the yellow dot with the red line, and you can click and drag that. You'll see as you do so, you can see your images up there in the program monitor. Now you'll notice because we set that default scale to frame size, all of our images are in their original form and to fit within the frame they have these black lines on either side of them. So for the Commune 1999 course it's really important that the images are represented in their original form as you took them on your camera. So if that means having these black lines on either side of the image, that's okay. Please note though that this may be different for other courses so always check with your tutor if you're unsure. I will, however, show you how to change the scale and position of your image should you wish to do so. So to change the scale of an image, we will hover over the image with our CTI so we can see it in our program monitor. We will click on that particular image and then you'll see up in our effect controls tab, we've got a few options in there, motion, opacity, time remapping. We're going to click on the little white triangle to open out the motion option. And then within here, we've got a few different things we can play around with. So to change the scale of the image, there's a few ways you can do it. You can click on that number, which is currently 100, as it's scaled to 100%. We can click on that, say 130. And you'll see the image is now scaled out, covering up those black lines. The other way you can change the scale is to actually click on the number and drag from left to right, making the image either scale in or scale out. And that's just so you know how to do that, where you can go in to change the scale. And you'll also see in there you can change the position so you can move it up or down or left to right. So once we're happy with the scale of our images, we're happy with how they look on the timeline, what we can do now is add some transitions between the photos. So in the left hand corner, near our media browser, you'll see we've got an effects tab. So if we click on the effects tab, that will open out the different audio and video transitions and effects that we can use within Premiere Pro. Now with the slideshows, cross dissolve is the most common. So we can easily find that by searching cross dissolve in the effects tab. And the effects work by clicking and dragging them on to the actual images. Transitions will only sit either at the beginning or end of a clip or over the end of one clip and beginning of another. So we'll drop that there. You can see it's sitting half over the end of one image and half over the beginning of another. And I'm going to apply that to all of my images. And then to make my slideshow begin and end nicely, I'm going to apply a dip to black transition. So I'll search dip to black. And I'll apply that in the same way I did the cross dissolve transition. Click and drag, dropping that at the beginning of my first clip 
and at the end of my slideshow as well. Include simple transitions, but nothing that distracts from the images themselves. Gimmicks like the star wipe are not acceptable for Commute 1999. So now we'll play what we have so far, drag your CTI to the very beginning of your timeline and press the space bar to play. And we'll see our slideshow playing out as is currently in the program monitor. I will highlight if at any point you're having issues with playback, it may be if you're working with very large images shot on a DSLR camera. So you can always quickly and easily resize your images in Photoshop if you're having these sorts of issues. Okay, so now we're happy with our slideshow, we're going to add some music. So we're going to navigate back to the media browser to navigate to our music. And we're going to click and drag that into our import bin to import our music we're going to use for this slideshow. So I've now got my audio in my import bin. I'll click and drag it down onto my timeline to sit on audio one. So the audio is sitting beneath my images. You can drop out that little audio track there by clicking the little white triangle so we can see our audio waves in that music track. Now we'll, we can press the backslash key to see how long that music is. And you can see that it's a lot longer than our actual slideshow itself. This is easily fixed. We can easily shorten the audio clip. And we do so by hovering over the end of the audio clip till we have this little red bracket appear with an arrow. And we simply click and drag that in until it lines up with our images. If you want to make your audio quieter, you can do so by dragging down this yellow line. Or alternatively, you can right click on the audio clip, select audio gain, and in here we can adjust the gain by typing in minus five, and you'll visibly see those audio levels become smaller and therefore the music track become quieter. Now at the moment, if we're to play our slideshow, you'll see that the music just suddenly stops. This is because we shortened the clip because it was much longer before. The original track would have faded out at the end, but we've chopped that off. So I'm going to show you now how you can put a little fade on the end of the music so it doesn't end so abruptly. So we'll navigate back to our effects tab. In the audio transitions in effects, we'll drop that down. And in crossfade, we're going to use a constant power. And like any effect or transition, we click and drag it onto the end of our audio clip. And we'll zoom in. You can actually extend the length of that transition so that the music fades out even more gradually. Okay, so one last thing before we export. We're going to quickly insert a title plate at the end of the slideshow. And you might need to do this to include your details for your tutor. So we'll drag our CTI right out to the very end. So it's not sitting over any of our photos. And then we'll head up to title in the toolbar, then select new title, and then default still. We'll give this a name. So I'm gonna call it title plate. Okay. And this little window will open up, which will enable us to create a title plate. So I'm just going to create something very simple. I'm going to draw a text box with my T tool selected. Click and drag to create a text box. I'm going to type in my details. And when I'm happy with that, I just click X and my title plate will be in my import bin now. So I can just click and drag that down onto my timeline. For Commune 1999, this title plate needs to be at the beginning of your photo slideshow to introduce your work and also identify you as a student. Okay, so now we're ready to export. First of all, hit Control S to save your project. You also have the option to go File, Save, and you can also go File, Save a Copy. You have the option of saving a copy in case your original project becomes corrupt at any point. Now, before we export, we need to make sure that our export bar is dragged out for the full entirety of our slideshow. Otherwise, if it's only dragged out to halfway, 
it will only export half of the slideshow. And likewise, if the export bar is dragged all the way out to the side, you'll have all this black, empty space at the end of your slideshow. So we'll make sure it's dragged up and magnetically clipped onto the end of where our slideshow ends. And that means we'll be exporting all of our slideshow. OK, so we make sure we have our timeline selected. And you'll know your timeline selected when you have the yellow outline around the timeline. Then we're going to head up to File, down to Export, and across to Media. And this is where we select the settings for our export, which is very important. For our format, we're going to select Windows Media. And for our preset, we're going to select HD 720p 25. And beneath this, we've got Output Name. So this is where we're going to name our exported file and also make sure we're saving it to a safe and secure location. So we'll click on that. Now I'm going to save it to my external drive. And I'm going to create a folder called Output. And this is where I can save any further exports to. And then I'm going to give it a name, maps, slideshow, final, underscore, one. And it's a good idea if you give your files names such as this, underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, and so on. So you will always be able to find what was your most recent export. If you go back and make any changes. Then we just click save. And when we're happy with all those settings, we'll just check down here scrub through to make sure it looks as it should. And you can see our estimated file size as well. So when you're happy with that, we click export. This will then render through and export our file where we've asked Premiere Pro to save it. And then we have our finished product. If you'd like more info on Premiere Pro, please attend a Maps Owl session on video editing, which is two hours long and a lot more in depth.